Hello again, and welcome back. So, I was at the local dollar store, which uh, unfortunately in Canada, there's not much for a dollar. Actually, I'm not sure if you can get anything for a dollar at dollar stores anymore, but regardless. I found this really cool uh, solar light. It says it's supposed to have eight lumens, and uh, I figured I would take a look. I want this to hang outside, so I might see if uh, there's any waterproofing I can do, maybe with a hot glue gun or whatever, but let's take a look. So let's open this up. Fresh blade on the uh, knife today, which means things should open a lot easier. And there we go. So there's a little bit of goobers here from the factory. This feels like glass. I think I actually should put glass in this. So it has a hook. Inside, there looks like there's three just 5 mil LEDs. And I, oh, I can see that it's actually, it was already half popped out. So here's some LEDs. They look like the straw hat variety. If I turn this on, what happened? Oh, it's blue. What the? Do you see that? They used blue LEDs instead of white LEDs. Interesting, I didn't really know that. So let's see what kind of battery they use. Gonna switch this off. I'm assuming that's the battery cover. Oh, there we go. Use a single nickel metal hydride battery. This thing weighs next to nothing. It says 600 milliamp hours, but I don't know. It's not very energy dense. That's interesting. It's shoved up in here uh, along with these uh, fake um, threads here. Okay. Well, let me grab a screwdriver and we'll open this up and see if there's any potential of water ingress. Let's get this open and see what we can see. I've got a component lead stuck to my screwdriver. Uh, four screws. Oh, I think this is the wrong screwdriver, but whatever, figure it out. This is made very cheaply. The, um, the plastic mold lines here are really sharp. Let's see, third one, fourth one down, two, three, four, and out it comes. Okay, so I'm seeing all these solar panels here are in series. If you look, there's only two wires going to the unit here, so one, two, and if you follow the, the red here, so the red goes in one panel, out the other, then into the next one, out, into the next one, out, and then out this black wire here. Very interesting. Let's see if I can lift the um, circuit board off of here and take a look. I'm not sure if it'll be as in-depth of a look as Big Clive, for example, would do, but let's uh, take a look either way. These screws are just screwed into the crappy plastic. So I'm not sure if I press down hard enough to get a good bite on the screwdriver, uh, the screw just goes back down inside. Come on out. Maybe I'll just try to pull the whole board out like this. Come on out. Okay, so aside from the two wires going to the battery here, we are out. Interesting. Seeing a four pin device. That is a YX8018 or an SK101. I'm seeing a capacitor. Uh, 104, so it's 10 microfarad. This looks like an inductor. Let's see. 
The bottom side here looks like, uh, where does the black go? So this is the black from the solar panels. Take this screw out. The uh, plastic residual on the threads is what's holding it in still. There we go. Okay, so the black from the solar panel comes here across to the capacitor and to kind of hard to tell. Let's see, where is the battery black wire going then? Battery minus right there. So that's negative. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on here. Four pin device is kind of odd to see inside here, but maybe it's just one of those, um, like a four pin micro, and it's just controlling the, uh, it's just controlling the output, but I don't think so. So here's the switch. Oh, switching the battery positive. So that's battery positive here. Because I don't think these LEDs would light at um, the 1.2 or 1.4 volts maximum on this uh, battery. Let's uh, let's take a look. I'll grab my multimeter here. We'll do a diode check. Okay, we're going to have to put this in the correct polarity. I'm wondering if they're doing sort of like a, a Jewel Thief like circuit. Because they're, if, they're, if that is truly an inductor, no actually it would have to be a transformer so that wouldn't even make sense. And there's no diode for a boost converter although it could be internal to here or they could be using the LEDs but let's let's take a look here. So diode check mode. Hard to get a good grip on here. Oh, it could be backwards though. Well, that's odd. Point. Oh, one. Hmm. I don't know what's going on here. This multimeter should have plenty of battery capacity to turn on these diodes. Oh, here we go. Hmm. I don't quite understand what's going on in here. Let me take a look, see if I can look up this uh, four pin dealy and see what's going on. So after looking up what that four pin deal is, it is a Jewel Thief based solar light controller. So it's, it's correct that it has an inductor. Um, this one, uh, the, this is the base diagram from uh, just from the interwebs there. So here's a switch, so that's this, this guy here that switch there on off. Um, that is the battery. So that would be our 1.2 volt nickel metal hydride cell. This is the solar panel here. In this case, they use a bunch of solar panels in series like we saw. There's our LEDs and the inductor. Now what must happen here is it must use the same inductor. There must be a set of diodes in there where the inductor gets uh, charged one way and then back the other because the only way for a Joule Thief to function is with a transformer with two sides. So th basically uh, it's a center tapped transformer. So it kind of looks like, uh, like this. Uh, and then there's your two connections. So it must use the same inductor to go 
one direction then the other one direction then the other so if you see here uh, this is I believe the the small is the positive plate I'm not 100 percent sure but it must go through this way and then back through the other way in order to work because these LEDs here can only go in one polarity so this must do the blocking in one direction so when uh, when the current's coming up this way it must go through here and then the other way gets blocked and goes through this inductor that must be how it works but that's really interesting so that, I find that really cool that they just use a simple off-the-shelf chip and very few components to make this work so basically uh, any solar cell above that will bring you above 1.2 volts so these are in series this must be really tiny tiny cells um, actually let's see how much current we can generate with these solar cells let me get set up for that so I desoldered the uh, solar panels from the rest of the board and I'm going to connect it to my multimeter here we're going to check the open circuit voltage um, just with the studio lights here it's not going to be as high as in the sunlight but we'll see what we can get so I'm going to hook up my little leads here there's one and there's the other there we go I'm going to face them up towards the studio lights Wow, that's actually impressive. So only two of the cells are lit because I can shade these and it doesn't do very much. I'm getting 4.3 volts. That's really good. That must mean each of these are something like close to two volts. If I shade one. That's actually quite impressive. Yeah, it looks three volts. So maybe there are uh, two cells here per side. That's quite interesting. Okay, so now let's give it the test. Let's see if we can uh, short this. I'm gonna pull this out. Go into milliamps. Don't think I'll blow my fuse. Yeah. Okay. So there's the limitation. This only runs uh, about. 10 11 milliamps let me just bring this up closer to the lights and we can get it more 14 yeah so figure about uh, 20 20 milliamps or so because there's four sides to this mind you they're not optimally placed right when this is hanging there's quite the angle here so okay, this will be closer to regular as you can see yeah okay like 30 milliamps that's not bad actually so 30 milliamps throughout the course of a day that won't be too bad let me solder this back together um, and then we're just going to check the the total current that we can get to flow to the battery let's check it out I'm gonna try to line this up here not sure if this will make it uh, a really nice shot but we'll try So that wire is supposed to go through that hole, but uh, this is much simpler. Plus, I don't think it's going to be under much strain. Okay, so that's that. Where's the solar plus? There's the negative I just soldered on. I think the plus is more crowded. Yeah, it's in here. It's right on the edge, this one here. I'm just going to lay that wire down. That's quite crowded. I'm going to switch it, flip it like that. Just give that a touch. There we go. I'm not talking about high current stuff, so it should be okay. All right, now thread this back in. Don't want to pull too much on those connections. There are screw holes to line up. There we go. Get those LEDs in.
Oh, I guess the switch should line up too, huh? Okay, take this, rotate it around. There we go, that's not so bad. Put these tiny, tiny little screws in. If I can remember which ones were the ones for the board here. That's back in. Gently put this back in without snagging any of the wires. Now this is important. Kind of have to push it down so that the uh, AA cell won't um, foul on the wires inside there. It's not terribly well made, but it was put together before, so it should back go back together the way it was. I'm just getting a mess of wires here. Maybe I'll twist this a little bit. To sort of gather the wires up. Nope, that's pinching. Just need this rotated just a tiny bit. For some reason it won't line up. I could have it totally off, that's very possible. There we go. Oh, that's off. Okay. Whoops. Well, there goes the battery door.
Well, that was a royal pain in the butt. Had a lot of trouble um, getting this back together, but it wasn't too, too bad. Now I do see a spot for water ingress because I don't feel like these uh, solar cells are quite well sealed. There is some uh, hot glue there, but uh, I didn't see a way to really get in there unless I tried to peel them out and I'm just not willing to do that. We'll see how long this uh, these lights last, but this does thread on here. And in the end, if it does start to collect water, I could always just poke a hole in the top here. But there we go. All four LEDs are lit and this is, I guess this dome being all foggy is supposed to diffuse it a bit, but yeah, I like these things. They look pretty cool. I just wasn't aware they were blue. So I got two of these. I'm gonna put them in the backyard and we'll see how long they last. Look out for that update. Thanks for watching.